we talk about self-defense, people usually think of, oh, I want to take a self-defense class. And they think they're going to learn some magic, high out, chop to the neck move that's going to kill some six foot nine huge dude, right? It's not really realistic, you know what I mean? Um, the first, first part of self-defense should be any type of boxing. You have to learn how to ball off your fist and punch someone, as well as getting hit. So when you think of, oh, I don't want to do boxing, I want to do self-defense. What do you think of learning in your self-defense class? You know what I mean? At the eye gouge, the knee to the groin. Let me tell you something. As a male, very young, we learn to block our groin from day one. So if you think you're going to come with a random knee to the groin, it's easily blockable. If you think you're going to come scratch us in the face, we've been trained to block that, okay? Especially a crazy person that's a bad guy because he's probably been through that already. You know what I mean? So when you think of self-defense, and I relate it to the weapons fighting, how does this correlate, you know what I mean? No city attacks that you hear about on the news are with a knife. Some people run around the streets with a damn sword and that's real, Google it, okay? Um, I was born and raised in New York City. Our school is in the Bronx, New York. I take the sixth train every day. The train is the worst thing ever. And this is not the exact video to promote New York. New York is messed up, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know where you guys are watching your video from, but if you live in New York, you understand. A lot of these attacks, a lot of these mentally unstable people, they're in the train system. They're in the not good areas, you know what I mean? So it's important to learn how to deal with a weapon. Are you walking around with a stick? That's the, that's the most common thing I hear. Well, you're not walking around with a stick all day. Well, probably other people are. But the stick represents a knife. The stick represents a shiv, a pen, any type of thing, okay? So when you have this gear on and you're working one shot as they're doing, if you notice, they're working on not getting hit, okay? And you have to be on point the whole time. So when you have the gear on, you're protected and you're not fearful of it. Then when we start to take the gear off and we put a little bit like rubber uh, padding on the sticks or the, uh, the rubber blades, you already understand certain movements and certain blocking because you had that confidence to, oh my God, I got hit by all these things, I got stabbed by all these things. and then we break it down and start to get a little bit more realistic with it. That's important because it, we had a, a bad incident of a young man, I think in Washington Heights, that was attacked by multiple young guys. I think the young man died, they were attacking him with a, with a machete. So the, the poor kid ran into a, a grocery store, he got attacked by a whole bunch of guys with machetes. And we're not talking about we need to train how to defend weapons. Granted, that was a terrible situation. So weapons and attacking, that, that's important. That's an important part of self-defense. It's very rare nowadays, someone's gonna come up to you and go, put up your hands, I'm trying to rob you. No, people are, are doing bad stuff. This kind of thing looks very crazy. I understand that, it's a tough self. But this is a cultural art of the Philippines. This is done all over the world, training with weapons. The military trains this kind of way. They train with the greatest masters in weaponry. Why? Because they relate the, the stick immediately to the knife. Just because you have a knife, Sometimes it's a deterrent, but if you really don't know how to use it, or let's say it gets taken away and someone's gonna use it on you, you have to know your basic slashes and strikes. So this is a, a way of doing this. Switching hands. Right after this, going to the vital stabs with the right hand. When you train Jiu Jitsu, we call it rolling. Okay, let's roll. Let me practice my moves nice and slow so that I can learn how to apply them and, and learn the situations that I gotta get my arm out, I gotta get your arm. When you're sparring, oh, let's throw on the gear, let's spar. You're learning how to parry and take shots. The same way with this. The stick is the fastest thing you will ever have to deal with. A stick is 50 times faster than your punch and 100 times faster than a kick, okay? So when you train your eyes to that, and someone starts to have hands and a crazy person has something, hey, give me your money, whatever like that, you, you start to understand where this is at, you know what I mean? So doing these drills, it's super important, you know what I mean? So 
when we talk about self-defense on a whole, oh, I'm a, a, a top flight self-defense instructor. What are they going to show? <laughs> These guys, burly guys with muscles, and they can't show a young 19-year-old uh, little girl how to defend themselves because they base it on, oh, fight him and throw him and take him down. It's not really realistic, you know what I mean? You got to do quick kills. And training weaponry is super important in urban areas. That's a fact. People have knives, people have everything, and people are crazy. You have to keep it real. So that's my interpretation of self-defense. Right after this, we put on the gloves and we do mitt work because the mitt work gets your boxing good and it's just great hand-eye coordination. Bowling your fist and punching someone in the face is the most important thing you can do in self-defense. It's not a high ya secret move. It doesn't really exist, you know what I mean? So that, that's my interpretation on self-defense. Everyone always asks me, so I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's finally in the video, you know? Top three things, in my opinion, you need to learn for self-defense. Weaponry is one because you're gonna get stabbed, <laughs> shot at, uh, all this craziness is gonna happen. Okay, that's one. Two, you need to learn how to box. You need to learn how to throw your hands. Three, you need to learn some wrestling because in most street fights, they're not just slugging it away. What happens after one person gets hit? Hair is grabbed. Someone clinches and tries to tackle. You need to learn how to swim. Learn how to fight with a weapon and a knife. Learn how to box punch and ball up your fist and punch someone. Learn how to wrestle so you can navigate the human body and get out of things. Those are your top three in self-defense.